race. Talking about it makes people look at you like you're an HD DVD player. Mm. Okay, maybe a Betamax. Okay, maybe a Nakabas. Okay, maybe that's too old. From the civil rights movement to the 2008 election, the U.S. society thinks that racism, for the most part, is over. So we still get touchy when we mention things like the drug war, military recruiting tactics, and how we're talking politically more times than I can count. Well, I guess Sean Quickers and Bill O'Reilly can go from articulate to crazy. But with the Joyce Zimmerman case, black rappers and actors saying stupidness as in money bought them immunity from blackness, and the recent firing of Paula Dean from the Food Network, we need to revisit the basics. So let's talk about race. <laughs> By literally talking about the words. Before we talk racism and racist, let's talk about ism and is. Ism, no matter which dictionary you turn to, basically means doctrine, theory, system of principles. In order for a system or doctrine or theory to be established, something must be repeated enough times in the same order. So if it only happens at certain times, random times, it's not a system, it's just a random act. Is donates a person who practices or is concerned with something or holds certain principles, documents, etc. In other words, a person who upholds a system of beliefs. Like an artist holds art, brand enthusiasts oppose their products and services, and political strategists who uses their college degrees to manipulate stacks to their advantages because they assume that the rest of us don't read things like reading the Constitution. Now, racism have three different definitions. Note that one and two are similar. The definition one describes society. Definition number two describes laws and policies uphold by political systems. Number three is basically the general meaning of the word. And racist means a personal belief in racism, the doctrine that a certain human race is superior to any and all others. Now, I will not insult your intelligence by saying, this is a white man's definition. The reason why is because I have learned that modern day historians and people who do this for the love are actually pretty neutral. But don't get it twisted. It might not always be the case as some things in history are whitewashed. <coughs> Religion, <coughs> Egypt. But that's top for another day. Well, I am gonna focus on the United States. If I hear someone say, well, my country, save it, save it, save it. I'm saying that mostly because anything that happens in this society actually affects others. If you don't understand that concept, I suggest you study human social behavior, such as war, and gentrification, and political hitmen, and why your name is contagious. <sighs> now some people may think, well, what about the biracials that can choose to be ideas white, but they're really mixed? These people are known as white passing, which means we are judging them based solely on their looks and are usually not affected by other elements until things come into play. Yeah, we're looking at you, Mrs. Zimmerman. If for some strange reason you lose this case, white people will disown you faster than they did O.J. Simpson. According to the 2010 U.S. Census, a little over 70% of the population is white. So, so that means the majority in every place in the U.S. Say for U.S. territories such as Guam, the United States Virgin Islands, the state of Hawaii, and the District of Columbia. That's right, our nation's capital has more blacks than whites, yet every time I visit, I can't seem to find any. White society favors sameness and predictability, so if you're the abnormality, you're just not interested if your tree shades darker than what they're used to. Remember, in 2008, this was said about then presidential candidate Barack Obama. You got the first mainstream African American who is articulate and bright and clean and a nice looking guy. The sad thing about this quote is that the guy who said it happens to work right down the hall. Awkward. Getting back to saying things that are near racist and getting away with it. Have you ever thought this when you call a call center? I hope I don't get an Indian. I hope I don't get an Indian. Please don't get an Indian. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Oh, God. If you did, even if you are black, the thing you thought came off as sounded racist. 
Other than the understandable but still wrong suggestion that you hope to get someone that speaks native English, you are also partaking in a belief system that degrades beliefs outside of the system, such as values, cultures, and ideas, make them totally unacceptable until they are devoid of the original meaning and gets adapted into the mainstream society. The belief you are holding if you call a call center and hope that you get someone whose native tongue is English is mostly a white belief because English is the language of European descendants. Well, mostly Britons, but let's not cut threads here. White people originated from the continent of Europe, so all the values they hold are pretty much Eurocentric. Like for example, the sheer irony of my last statement when I call Europe a continent when it's really a peninsula. But if I was to teach a child such a thing, it would be wrong in a geography quiz. Revisiting is, remember your call to the call center? That was upholding a belief system that's been passed down from generation to generation that white languages and accents are superior. And if you don't believe me, let's look at my hair. Recently, I read a report about a school in Ohio that drafted a school policy that banned apple puffs and box braids. That caused a big stir because while apple puffs and box braids were not accepted, the dress code made no mention about the non-black equivalent of the same styles. But in all fairness, girls are allowed to have their hair long. Hmm. While this might be an innocent mistake on the school's part, as they did retract said code later, it shows outright that white order is more respected than black humanity. White girls can keep their hair long, while black girls will have to cut their hair to keep them in line of school code. Unless, of course, they use um, a hot comb to straighten it out. And this code is also upheld by corporate America, in which, in certain positions of power, a man or woman cannot display extreme hairstyles. So my hairstyle would be considered extreme, whereas a mullet is known for business in the front, party in the back, and it's still acceptable, no matter how bad it looks. This type of reasoning is why some black people develop a mistrust with white culture practices because it's more acceptable when whites do it than blacks. But it's also the reason why some misleading blacks get excited when white people adapt something into their culture, hoping that if whites accept it, then blacks can finally do it. The black people that support this practice, by definition, are racist because they are upholding the majority belief that it's alright if a white person does it. Yes, I call black people racist because they believe that a white belief is more valuable than their own belief, even if their own body or hair can't sustain this belief. This is what is known as internalized racism, which while it's not a dictionary word, it's a natural practice where we are holding an internal account of mainstream beliefs, cultures, and doctrines. The only difference is that we're holding these ideas against our own people. Notice that I didn't change the definition to suit my agenda, which now leads to a popular question I get asked all the time. How is it when white people does something to people of color, it's racist, but when it's reversed, it isn't. Let's start with what is actually in the dictionary. The closest thing I can find is reverse discrimination, which is actually a thing. Yes, you heard me correctly, a black person openly admit that reverse discrimination can actually happen. You want a sound bite? Reverse discrimination is real, but reverse racism is an oxymoron. Here's an example of how that works. There's a policy in NYC called Stop and Frisk. Basically, this policy developed by the NYPD is to stop and question, maybe even search people that they believe suspicious. Now, according to the New York Civil Liberties Union, in 2012, New Yorkers were stopped by the police over 500,000 times. Out of this, 89% of them were innocent, 10% um, was white, 32% was Latino, and 55% of them were um, opposite of white. Thanks to a system that assumes black and other people of color are more likely criminals can ruin innocent lives. I know because I was stopped three times and actually lost a job once. This wouldn't have happened if policies such as racial profiling didn't exist. So what does this have to do with reverse racism, you say? Well, white people have more power over black people and people of color than they want to acknowledge. Since the system favors Eurocentric behaviors, people of color can't be racist against other people of color because they are holding the beliefs of the majority. Now you might be asking, but what if a black-owned company discriminates white employees? 
That's got to count as racist, right? It may count as discrimination, but it doesn't count them as racist because if we're going by a definition, then in order for racism to happen, the black owner will have to fire his black staff and replace it with a white staff. As ridiculous as that sounds, that's what racism means. But be thankful for the Equal Employer Opportunity Commission when it works. Remember, racist means a person who believes in racism, the doctrine that a certain human race is superior to any or all others. So you watch this video and you're still wondering why we can't be racist. People of color can be racist, but only to other people of color because they are upholding the belief system of the majority, which is Eurocentric values, which means mainstream values, which means white people. So to call people of color racist against white people would be incorrect because that's racist means you are not upholding my white Eurocentric values, and I find that's unfair. So now you're thinking, but well, what about the hatred and tolerance of another race or other races? That's racism. Ever wonder why definitions are numbered? It's because they follow a historical order called the order of census. The Merriam-Wesper Collegiate Dictionary is a dictionary on historical principles, so it would list things in historical order aka the white man's definition. While the first definition is probably the modern way of saying racism, the other two definitions still exist. Also, people are more likely to describe an activity as racist since racist is an adjective and racism is a noun, which goes back to the entire point of this verbose video essay. White people cannot experience reverse racism and people of color cannot be racist to white people because it would then mean that white people, cultures, ideas, documents, and beliefs are no longer the mainstream. Is that true? Tell me, is that true? It isn't. So, my fellow people of color, it's true. The definition is correct. The problem is that white people who claim that reverse racism is actually a practice, well, they just don't have reading comprehension skills. This is rules and fuse wisdom. Who's the next victim? Fuck the whole system. This is rules and fuse wisdom. Who's the next victim? Fuck the whole system. Now where do I begin? You're such a troubling thing. You should.